be 4,000 tons left, something like that. Bloody hell. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Another you. couple of months of work, I say, will be gone. You poor old bugger. Oh. She's no fame anymore. No, she bloody isn't, but she never bloody deserved this, that's mm -hmm. for sure. No way. No way. God, God almighty, I hope I kill. Let the poor old bugger go with some dignity and pull the bloody plug out, I'll never know. I mean, the old girl was worn out, she was tired, and she was at the end of her life, but to see this is bloody heartbreaking. Things over there where kids literally work their guts out to get her clean and sparkling. I, ju I just left her and looked back on, along the jetty, and there she, there she was in sort of all a bloody splendour like. For what she did for England, did she? And the country, she did. She didn't deserve this. I don't think, anyway. You remember everything, you know. I can hear a tannoy blaring out, and you see little little Wolf performing, and uh, you remember uh, in bad weather. You remember aircraft landing on, and oh, there's a million memories. In the Coast Guard now. Don't know what the others are doing though. God blimey. Let's go, Sam. Crap, how'd you find these seats? Excellent. Yeah, very good. Yeah, good. I was flag officer Portsmouth for about two and a half years. Okay. Right. Now I'm the director and secretary of the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. It's fair to say that this this job is nothing like running the Ark Royal, but the nice thing about it is that it's still very much to do with the sea. One of the interesting things is that we now have far more lifeboats than there are ships in the Navy, so this is a, a good deal, I always think, sort of bigger job than the Navy now. Well, I miss the Navy. Um, it was a hell of a break for me after nearly 24 years to step foot in Civvy Street. and sort of stand up on my own. I found it uh, very hard. Off a cap. <coughs> on the 2nd of March, without reasonable excuse, did fail to attend the muster of both watches of the flight deck party to 800 muster it was his duty to attend. Do you understand the charge? <coughs> Sir. How do you plead? Guilty. You lose the discipline, I think. You lose that security of the discipline, your, your mates, your regular income. I think you lose a little bit of dignity as well because you're not wearing that uniform anymore. In a way, I suppose we were spoiled, molly coddled for a few years, well looked after. And you come outside, it's very hard to to adjust to City Street. I had a holiday in um, in Florida. I took my parents and um, mother and father to Florida for a month to um, the west coast. Went to Tampa, a little place called Wiki Wachi, and my wife and. Um, her daughter. We all went um, for a vacation, you know. I, I came back from there and um, I had six weeks on the go and then I got a job. I couldn't handle the work, I couldn't handle the travelling that I had to do back and forwards. Um, especially for an older man like me to face the rigours of the modern world. Eventually we split up, we got a divorce. I couldn't really handle um, a lot of um, the personal things involved with a divorce. And I'd uh, made threatening remarks to her and her new man, you know, which was a foolish thing for me to do. But there again, I was 30 miles away and it was over the telephone. And I'd had a beer. And um, they sent me away to um, Winchester for uh, three weeks for reports. And. Um, I got a piece of paper to prove that I'm sane. <laughs> if an ex Matlow can be sane, you know. And um, it, uh, 
that knocked a hole in me and it straightened me out quite a little bit actually and I thought well I ain't gonna go through this again um, basically I think my character wasn't quite strong enough and um, and Rose my ex-wife perhaps um, that when I wanted to lean on her shoulder and she wanted to lean on mine we we weren't oh I wasn't man enough to um, explain to her that uh, that I needed a little bit of help Twinks were a pain in the butt, but when the chips were down, Twinks came up trumps. You know, he was one of these one of these guys, exasperating one minute, and yet, when you wanted him for something and say, right, you know, this is it, he was there. And it was the same with most of the kids, um, and most of the officers and men were the same. I mean, you got you got the uh, the medical officer, uh, old Joni, and. Uh, Bernard Marshall, the Padre, uh, they're, they're the type of people that make a ship. Guard! Hold! Interline! Left! Turn! I'm now the chaplain of HMS Drake and the coordinating chaplain for all Royal Naval chaplains in the Western area. I can have a very beautiful church to look after. And it also means, as the Church of England has rural deaneries, so in the Navy I am sort of the rural dean to all the chaplains that I'm a mini father in God to, some ashore, and all the chaplains who are seagoing and operate from Devonport. We're not here. Now we fix the dates for the rest of the year, so everybody ought to be able to get them in their diary. And make... One of the facts that you've got to face is if you are totally exposed by television, the price that the individual is going to pay for speaking forthrightly, allowing every nook and cranny of his life to be seen, um, is that when the post-mortem is done, um, if you've been a, a slightly controversial character at all, you're bound to be left with a, with a slight feeling of singed fingers, to put it in picture language, aren't you? $4,000 question is, how can you be a chaplain in the Navy on the assumptions all Christians are pacifists? Because I think it was controversial in, in, in the quotation of Sailor's idiomatic language coming out of the screen with Zap, which caused an emotional reaction with a, a, a tremendous number of people who didn't listen, perhaps, to the ensuing development of the, of the argument. It is not right that any questions of immorality or indecency or greed should even be mentioned among you nor is it fitting for you to use obscene, foolish, or dirty words. But most sailors use this bad language in an idiomatic fashion to express their gut feeling. And if you restrict their use of bad language, then it seems to me their true emotional state will never properly register because it's so much part of their life. I do not mind using their language, because it seems to me that I can make a point to them, I can make the distinction between blasphemy and swearing. Swearing is merely ignorance of the English language. If one turns around to me and says, Jesus wept, Padre, then I can make the point that they are really upsetting me, that they are using the name of someone that I love in an offensive way, and it sort of sticks in my gullet. Well, it was balanced out. Obviously, the people that were anti hearing me being frank about the life and the language of Ark Royal. That, that's what happened first, because that's the nature of it, isn't it? If something fires you up in your ante it, you leap into print. The great thing for me was the number of people who in slower time took the trouble to write and say, um, thank heaven somebody has spoken frankly and honestly about what the situation is. He, he made a point, and, and the point was that he became, he became a sailor, and it, by becoming a sailor, he was able to communicate with the sailors. And what's more, Bernard obtained the trust of the men. If you don't get their respect and trust, you might as well put your coat on and go home. You're never going to get anywhere with a sailor, unless he trusts you. And Bernard earned that trust, and uh, he was marvellous. Leslie Vernon, will you have this woman to be your wife, to live together in a holy marriage, you we got divorced after about two and a half years. We were working different times, and when we saw each other, we just couldn't agree on things and sort, seemed to sort things out, you know. I'm living with a lady now. She's just got a divorce. She got four girls of her own uh, from her first marriage and one of mine, a little girl who's just turned one year old. Ta. 
Oh, you miss all the sunshine and the swimming pool. That was absolutely superb, just get up at six o'clock in the morning, go and dive in the swimming pool, you know. I suppose to me it was living fantasy, really. You get out there and it was just great. You know, I thought it would have lasted longer than it did. It was a dream life. I could do whatever I wanted to then, you know, so of course I was off skip free. And really, it wasn't like being married at all, not really, because there I was exploring a whole new land, and there she was trying to be a wife, and I wasn't there, you know what I mean? It's a bit strange, you know, to see him get married on the television again, but it doesn't really bother me. It didn't have a dawn on me that, you know, he'd come <coughs> back to England, and I'd sort of meet up with him, and we'd start living together, and eventually marry. I didn't mm. ever think that. I thought, oh, he got a life in America, and that was it sort of thing. Well, I started butchering after I left school in 1968. And I was a butcher till I was about 18, until I joined the Navy. And then I came back and I took butchering back up, which is about three years ago. It seems strange that you've got to go right around the world a couple of times or a time and a half or so before you marry the girl next door, more or less. But I'm happy to say that that's what I've done, and I've settled down and I've found what I've wanted. Ah, come on then. Look. When he's coming there for the first time, he's obviously very nervous. Understandably so. He's heard all the hairy stories of people crashing on the deck and so forth. And he's a, and he's a new guy, so he's worth watching. You're very slow, monsieur. Boat, boat, full power. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard this Britannia Flight 126 Alpha to Tenerife. Your captain today is Alan Gibson. Well, I came to the to the ship having had eight and a half years of flying with the, the Air Force from runways a mile and a half long. And there was this postage stamp offered to me. I'd heard the stories from uh, experienced people that on making the approach to the ship, at the end of the ship, there was invariably a little bit of sink. So as I was making my approaches, I was putting on a little bit of power, but unfortunately, the day I was there, there was no sink forming. So the power was just enough to lift me over the top of these uh, four wires, and I missed and had to keep trying to get the approach.